Now, if you thought that tracking down a compact smartphone was tricky enough before, well, in 2024, you've got more chance of spotting the Loch Ness Monster having a round of golf with the reanimated corpse of Margaret Thatcher. Asus was one manufacturer that you could always depend on to spaff out a refreshingly dinky Zenfone. But this year, they ripped my heart out and flushed it right down the Kazi when they launched the massive Zenfone 11 Ultra instead with bugger all sign of a regular Zenfone 11 actually happening anytime soon. But before you start sobbing into your plate of chocolate hobnobs, do not worry, your Uncle Spurt is here to help. Here's my pick of the best mini mobiles you can grab yourself right now in 2024, and I've done full reviews right here on Techspurt. Now first up, one of the only dinky phones to launch so far this year is Samsung's Galaxy S24 an 800 quid flagship that measures a palm-friendly 6.2 inches with a reassuringly rugged and water-resistant design. I switched to the regular Galaxy S24 from Samsung's oversized almighty S24 Ultra and not only is the vanilla model much easier to use one-handed but my groinal region was much happier every time I squeezed it into my jeans. Like with the regular S24 I could have it there in my pocket and still do squat thrusts if I have a fancy doing a squat thrust. What actually is a squat thrust? You've got a lot of AI type shenanigans that Samsung can't stop banging on about, just like Google's Pixel phones. Although the Galaxy S24 is powered by Samsung's own Exynos chipset here in Blighty, rather than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And this certainly feels the strain when gaming on the likes of Genshin Impact, and it can make the S24 a rather toasty wee chap. And yeah, the battery life is merely okay, not great. But besides that wee bit of griping and the fact that the storage starts at a meagre 128 gigs and is not expandable, as always, the Galaxy S24 does pack a lot of premium hardware. You've got a bright and colourful AMOLED screen, a decent enough stereo speaker arrangement and a triple lens camera setup that can capture some good looking snaps of the fam, although contrast isn't quite as rich and tasty as what you'll get with some Chinese rivals. So overall, as long as you're not a gamer, you should be pretty happy with that dinky S24. Alternatively, one of my favourite compact smartphones of 2024 so far is the Xiaomi 14. At 6.36 inches, this is really pushing the boundaries of what counts as a compact smartphone. But hey, I didn't say this was going to be easy. The Xiaomi 14 is another flagship like the S24 with a similarly sleek design and yet another gorgeous AMOLED display slapped on there. This time it's sharper, with a more eye-comfortable brightness level in low light, and Dolby Vision support as well as HDR10 Plus streaming. And hey, this time us Brits don't actually get gypped on the performance, because it's Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 stuffed inside of there, which is an absolute powerhouse. So you can merrily game on Genshin Impact and other memory guzzling games without your fingers getting a bit warm. And that frame rate stays fluid even if you struggle to tear yourself away for a good hour or two. Battery life is bloody brilliant as well. Even more demanding users should make it through a full day, no worries. And the Xiaomi 14 supports super nippy 90 watt wired charging support. You've also got 50 watt wireless charging support, so it's considerably faster than the Galaxy S24 when it comes to juicing back up. Xiaomi's HyperOS launcher has its quirks, just like Samsung's own One UI, of course. But I've got to say, I absolutely really love the optics on it. That Leica partnership has done wonders for Xiaomi's camera tech and the 14 can spaff out wonderfully atmospheric landscapes, natural looking portrait shots, the works, as well as some slick looking home movies. Anyway, check out my Xiaomi 14 review here on Techspert for the full skinny on this delightfully dinky mobile. I've also done you a separate video on HyperOS if you want to know more about the software side. Now an older but still marvellous compact flagship phone that you can bag yourself right now is Google's Pixel 8. As usual, one of the definitive highlights here is that camera tech. And this can capture gloriously natural looking shots at any time of day. Although you don't get the excellent telephoto shooter that Google reserved for the Pixel 8 Pro, and I occasionally see a wee bit of jank from the post-processing, which was never the case with older models. The Pixel 8 is powered by Google's Tensor G3 chipset, which certainly isn't a high-performance platform, so Genshin Impact fans be warned. However, this does allow for plenty of nifty AI features, which is obviously all that anyone can bang on about anymore. Plus, do not forget the rest of those Pixel-exclusive features, the likes of call screen and yada yada, which are still ruddy brilliant. 
As for the media chops, well, this flagship phone shockingly serves up some stunning AMOLED screen tech and a respectable stereo speaker setup just like the others. Add in Google's excellent software support, seven years of OS and security updates, no less, and you've basically got yourself a mini marvel that can do it all, except for intensive gaming, of course. And do not stress if money's a bit tight for that Pixel flagship because you can always save yourself a bit of cash and get Google's Pixel 7a instead. Despite being cheaper, it's still an absolute cracker and it's just a 6.1 inch blower as well, although admittedly the bezels surrounding that display are slightly thicker, so it's roughly the same dimensions. The materials it's built from aren't as premium, but the Pixel 7a looks just as stunning as its flagship bros and the hand feel is truly magnificent. The brains of this mini mid-ranger is the older Tensor G2, so yeah, it gets a bit warm to the touch at times. But the Pixel 7a can happily run anything you chuck at it, and it doesn't struggle too hard with games like Genshin. That OLED screen is another 90Hz slice of eye pleasing heaven, while the stereo speaker setup ain't too shabby. And the software side is just as satisfying, with those same stock Android vibes, the same excellent security and privacy features, and years of updates to look forward to. Plus, you will struggle to find a better smartphone snapper at this sort of price. Between the fresh 64 meg quad beer camera sensor and the Tensor's slick image processing smarts, you will once again be treated to great looking pics, even in some pretty rough conditions. Do note, however, that the Pixel 7a's successor, perhaps unshockingly titled the Pixel 8a, is expected to launch in May, although it may not be released globally for a wee while after that. Now, ASUS may have dropped a bit of a clanger in 2024 by launching this here ridiculously massive Zenfone 11 Ultra and forgetting to give us an actual Zenfone 11. But the good news is you can still grab yourself a delightfully dinky Zenfone 10 from last year and you can sometimes find a decent deal on it too. This sub 6 inch smartphone is absolutely adorable, boasting glorious hand feel and effortless one handed action. In fact, the only problem is it's so dinky and lightweight that occasionally you'll have it in your pocket, you'll be strutting your way down the street and suddenly you'll do the whole trouser slapping. Oh, bollocks, where's my phone? Someone's nicked my phone. Oh, no, wait, no, it's, it's still in there. And definitely do not underestimate this phone over its diminutive stature. The Zenfone 10 is a proper flagship blower, no questions. Packing Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset for supremely beefcake performance while the battery life is absolutely sublime, among the very best in this roundup in fact. I'm also a fan of the super sharp, eye-poppingly bright OLED screen and those surprisingly punchy speakers. And extra marks for the surprisingly stock Android vibes on the Zenfone 10 as well, but don't expect the same level of software support as what you'll get from those pixels, because ASUS is only promising two years of OS updates and three years of security updates. Not bad, but not as good. And that camera tech isn't quite as good as the Pixel phones either, struggling in more taxing conditions, but if you want something that is proper Wii, then look no further. And if you somehow manage to sniff one out somewhere, I still really like the Motorola Edge 30 Neo. It has now been succeeded by the Edge 40 Neo, but the latest version isn't quite as dinky and hand friendly. This slick Wii media machine rocks a bright and poppy POLED display, as well as Dolby Atmos stereo speakers. The performance is alright, the battery life is respectable, and you've got a stock Android experience which certainly gets my patented spooge of approval. And the battery also charges up rather nipply and you've got wireless charging support which is quite rare at the sort of budgety mid-range price point. But sadly the camera tech is less impressive and Motorola's software support is pretty cack compared with the likes of Google and Samsung and as this blow is already over a year old, don't expect many more years of support. But the Edge 30 Neo will certainly attract various glances as you strut down the street with its very bright, very peri design. Now if you're after a compact smartphone, an alternative option is always Apple's iPhone. The regular iPhone 15 is 6.1 inches, so pretty dinky, despite the fact that it's a brick-like slab. Sadly, I haven't reviewed the iPhone 15, so I can't comment on that particular model. I've only reviewed the almighty, massive, humongous Pro Max version. And frankly, I'd rather have a rabid squirrel stashed in my pants than that thing. However, iOS fans should probably try and scout out the iPhone 13 mini on a decent deal. 
This 5.4 inch Titch is undoubtedly my favorite of Apple's flagship smartphones because not only is it pleasingly hand friendly, but also it packs basically the same specs as the regular iPhone 13 and it's the least ridiculously overpriced of all of the Apple flagships. And yes, you can get the fresh new iPhone SE third generation for considerably cheaper, but that would be serious folly. I mean it, right? If the iPhone 13 mini is an all-inclusive fortnight on some sun-kissed tropical island, well, the iPhone SE is a wet weekend on Wandsworth Common with someone repeatedly booting you in the crotch. But anyway, more on all that shenanigans in a bit. Unfortunately, the iPhone 13 mini does spot the same weird retro brick-like design as its bigger siblings, but in this form factor, it's not uncomfortable to clutch, while one-handed use is refreshingly simple. Apple has finally toughened up its handset so they stay fresh and scratch-free, with the added bonus of full ward resistance. It's not all good news, sadly. The OLED screen does top off at 60Hz, and you still have that ridiculous Dr. Robotnik moustache notch to contend with. But still, performance is top draw and the battery life is good enough to see you through a fairly busy day. And I was impressed with the dual lens rear camera setup as well, which is dependable at most times of the day and does a bang up job for your home movies. So definitely check out my full in-depth iPhone 13 mini review if you want to know more. And yeah, if you are after an iPhone, well definitely try and spend that extra cash on the mini rather than resorting to the new iPhone SE. It's the smartphone equivalent of herpes. Seriously, one of the happiest moments of 2022 for me so far was finishing my review of this bag of bollocks and ripping my SIM right out of it again. What's so bad about it? Well, take your pick from the outdated design, the horrendously bad battery life, that woefully inadequate camera tech, the frankly insulting amount of storage which isn't expandable, the ugly display, the list just goes on and on, but hey, it does have wireless charging support and the same A15 chipset as the iPhone 13 mini, so that's nice. Kind of like sprinkling some glitter on a steaming dog turd. Now, if you're a bit of a gamer or you count yourself as a pro photographer, well, you might be swayed by Sony's pleasingly dinky Xperia 5 smartphones. The latest Xperia 5 Mark V is a more compact 6.1 inch version of the Xperia 1 flagship with a similar stretchy design that is gloriously hand-friendly. Mmm. You've got almost the exact same hardware here, including another stunning cinema-wide 120Hz OLED screen with bugger-all notches or floating apple turds obstructing your view. Gamers too are well-serviced by that slick performance, as well as Sony's excellent set of mobile gaming features. The Xperia 5 Mark V can blaze through Call of Duty Mobile with stunning 120 frames per second visuals as usual, and it's great for a bit of genshining on the side. And Sony's Xperia smartphones always boast a few features you won't find on other flagships, the likes of a headphone jack, an actual micro SD memory card expansion support, huzzah! But of course, as usual, if all you want is a simple point-and-shoot camera experience, then you'll be better off with the likes of the Pixel phones or pretty much any other blows that I've already banged on about in this roundup. But if you want a proper DSLR-style setup, well, the Xperia 5 Mark V is going to be so far up your alley, there's a good chance it'll become permanently stuck. With a bit of care, you can get some gorgeous shots and also record some stylistic video using Cinema Pro. The video creator mode is great if you just want to stitch together a quick TikTok on the move. You've also got tools for musicians and all kinds of creative guff on here. Overall, a rather pleasing package in a hand-friendly form, if rather expensive. Now, if one of your biggest problems in life is having far too much lovely cash wadged inside of your wallet or stuffed underneath your mattress, well, no worries. An easy way of getting rid of tons of it in one go is by buying a bendy blower. And the good news is, not all foldable phones are whopping great massive bricks like the Galaxy Z Fold. For instance, the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra is ridiculously wee when it's all folded up, so you can shove it anywhere you like. Although certain bodily orifices may be a literal stretch. The big whoop for this Razr generation is the super-sized external screen, which supports any app out there. With mixed results naturally, but it's refreshing being able to switch albums in Deezer, or do a quick Google search or whatever without bothering to flip this adorable bugger open. You've also got some decent widget support and even some silly little games to kill a couple of minutes while your Ginster's cheese and onion pasty is being blasted in the microwave. However, whip the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra open and you've got a massive 6.9 inch LTPO OLED screen for playing games, enjoying a bit of the Netflixes, whatever you fancy. 
With up to 165Hz refresh, so everything stays as smooth as my bonsaw smothered in lard. And this latest Moto Razr is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, so it can handle Genshin Impact, PUBG, any title you chuck at it without collapsing into a wheezy heap. And the battery life is a bit better for this generation too, although that camera tech is still merely fine, and the asking price, well it's not bad for a foldable, but it still ain't exactly cheap. So as much as I love this handset, it's certainly in for anyone on a budget. Now you've got quite a few other options in 2024 when it comes to compact foldables from the likes of Techno, ZTE, etc. One of the better ones is the Oppo Find N2 Flip, which boasts a clever and inexplicably hilariously named Flexion hinge for a near crease-free finish on that internal display. But sadly, that bloody huge cover screen isn't quite as versatile or as fun to use as the Razer phones. And Samsung also offers its own compact foldable in the form of the Galaxy Z Flip 5, which you can usually find a decent deal on, otherwise it will empty your wallet to the tune of almost a grand. For this fifth iteration, they finally sorted out the dodgy hinge, so now at long last we've got a gap-free finish. And it's also IPX8 water resistant, which frankly is kind of bonkers for a foldable. That cover screen has ballooned in size to 3.4 inches, and with a bit of jiggery pokery, you can run any app you like on it, just like the Moto Razr. Whip this bad boy open, and the Galaxy Z Flip 5's mighty 6.7 inch dynamic AMOLED screen unfurls before your very eyes. It's great for watching a bit of video, multitasking with apps, or getting your Genshin on. Whatever you fancy, it should run well thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 smarts. You may want to plug in some headphones though, because the so-called stereo speakers ain't great. And that battery life is sadly sphincter-clenchingly mediocre, so chances are you'll finish most days in power saving mode. As for the optics, well that dual lens camera is fine for shooting everyday snaps, as long as you don't try testing it too hard in tricky lighting. But as always, you can use the rear cams to snap a selfie, thanks to the cover screen preview type situation. And if you're an old git like me, you might well appreciate the fresher limited edition retro version of the Z Flip 5, which I've also unboxed right here on Techspert, featuring a nostalgic design and some proper Samsung collectibles bunged in the box. And there you have it, my lovelies. That is what I think is a pretty comprehensive look at the best compact smartphones you can grab yourself in 2024. As you can see, a dwindling number every bloody year. But have I missed out your own personal pick for the best mini mobile of 2024? Well, certainly let me know what a massive clagnet I am down in the comments below. And if you want to know more about any of these smartphones, what I banged on about, we'll definitely check out the full reviews, unboxings, etc. right here on Techspert. Please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.